as well. So I am very proud and I am so very honored to introduce our next keynote speaker, to Dr. Larry Weber. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm always thrilled to come to this event because it's the only place where I can see all the technologies on one floor, on one wall, and, and, uh, and compare them all with the same content, the same calibration, and, and uh, uh, this is exciting for me. I've been in doing this now for 45 years, and uh, of course, most of you know me as a plasma display guy. And uh, we, we got all these, these beautiful LCDs uh, with the 4K. And so I, I thought it would be appropriate to start off with, you know, plasma's always got to be a little better. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> here is the 8K, 145-inch uh, plasma that was done by uh, Panasonic and NHK. And uh, this thing has 32 million pixels in it. Uh, and uh, it's uh, quite a thing to see. Half, the only problem is, uh, they, they, fit, they made this display, the size was determined by how big the door in the 747 was, okay? <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, they forgot to figure out how much it would cost to ship it on a 747. <laughs> and so the only place you could see this was in Tokyo. And uh, so Plasma's done a lot of great things, and, and it, it's great to see our, our Samsung winner from last year. And uh, over many years, the Plasma has, has been the leader and, and many times the winner here at the shootout. And so it's, it's a little sad to say that, you know, plasma is, is dying out. And uh, Panasonic, uh, which was a winner a number of years, closed their plant in March. Uh, Samsung, which makes this display up here, uh, is uh, scheduled to close that plant in November of this year. And so that leaves uh, LG and another company, Chung Hong, uh, that's still making plasma, and they haven't announced any plans yet. Uh, and, and you say, well, what happened? Uh, here we've got, uh, you know, the, the leader in the technology, and why did it, um, why did it fail? Well, the reason is, is real simple, and it's marketing, okay? Marketing is a big part of this. And um, here you have a, a pretty easy business situation to understand. Uh, companies like Samsung, we have a lot of excellent Samsung displays here. Uh, Samsung has maybe a hundred times more investment in LEDs than it does in plasma. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you don't want to market the wonderful attributes of the plasma uh, at the expense of your major cash cow. Okay, and so I think that's what happened to plasma. It's not that the technology wasn't good. If you can get those plasmas, you're going to be real happy with them, you know, and, and I think I, I've seen the Panasonic plasma. You can see them on eBay, uh, but the price has been going up, okay, and so there's a lot of value there in plasma, and uh, it's, it's too bad that plasma couldn't survive uh, the big time, and maybe, maybe it'll survive in some smaller sense because, like I say, there's a couple manufacturers still there, but uh, that's the situation. So, let's move on, and uh, what I wanted to cover is just uh, talk about the different technologies that we have in front of us. Uh, uh, this is the first time, I believe, that we've ever had three major technologies at the shootout. Is that right? I mean, we've got, we've got plasma, we've got liquid crystal, and we've got OLED. This may be the last year we have three technologies also, okay? Uh, but um, you never know. Uh, the the major difference between these technologies is we have what's called emissive technologies, which is the plasma displays here on the left. Uh, also, the OLED is, is an emissive technology, so the characteristics between the plasma and the OLED are the most similar. Uh, the liquid crystal on the right. The, the beauty of the emissive technologies is each pixel is a light bulb, so it radiates in all directions. So you'll see the viewing angle on your OLEDs and your plasmas is much better than it is on the liquid crystal. The reason is because the liquid crystal has a molecule that uh, has to get twisted around and it's a light shutter and uh, depending upon exactly the angle that that molecule that you see it at, it gets different optical characteristics. A light bulb, a fluorescent lamp, which is what the plasma display is, doesn't have this problem. And the OLED is, is another little light bulb. It doesn't have that problem. Uh, so that's the big, big difference, emissive versus non-emissive. Uh, now, I think most of you know how a plasma works. You know how an LCD works. One's a light shutter, one's a light bulb. 
Uh, let's look at the OLED. This is the comparison between the LCD on the left and the OLED on the right. Uh, the LCD again has the molecules in here along with the active matrix, the thin film transistors that turn the pixels on and off. Uh, the OLED is really a light emitting diode. It's an organic light emitting diode. So when you send current uh, through the diode, uh, that current causes electron hole pairs uh, which recombine and generate light. Uh, that uh, light goes in all directions uh, very easily. And so again, you have the emissive characteristic of the, um, uh, that it is superior to the liquid crystal. Uh, now, the, there are actually two different kinds of OLEDs to make it a little more complicated. In fact, the wonderful thing is we've got representatives of both here. Uh, the one on the left is the way Samsung does it. In fact, the display on the far left bottom is that display. Uh, it has individual red, green, and blue uh, OLEDs. Uh, and so each, uh, each OLED subpixel emits a different color. Uh, on the other hand, on the right, the, the OLED on the right, which is the LG one, uses what's called color by white. And so here you have a white OLED material up at the top, which is the emitting layer, and that, that white light gets sent through R, G, and B color filters, just like the color filters uh, that are in the LCD. In other words, the color filter layer here is virtually identical to the uh, color filter layer that's right up here in your LCD. It's made by the, pretty much the same process. Um, so the advantage of doing it this way is that uh, it, it's actually somewhat difficult to make the R, G, and B OLED. And the reason that a lot of people don't realize it is you can't use photoresist technology. Just about all patterning technology that's done in electronics uses this thing called photoresist. It turns out the OLED material is almost the same thing as photoresist. And so when you go to develop a way, uh, you know, the, uh, the pattern, the, the OLED will go just like the photoresist goes, okay? And so you, you can't really use photoresist technology to put down your OLED layers. And that's what was used on the far left in the uh, Samsung display. So what they have to do is use a shadow mask. They actually have some emissive material, uh, you know, emission of OLED material, and then there's a little slot of metal that uh, blocks it. And so they have to do that for the red, the green, and the blue. And it ends up being a more complicated process. Uh, with this method of the color by white, the advantage is, is that uh, you do the photoresist technology on your R, G, and B color filter. And we know how to do that. There's many LCD fabs and suppliers that will supply that. And your OLED material itself doesn't have any pattern to it at all. It's just a big blanket white area that's across the whole screen. So, uh, so that gives it some, uh, some, a lot easier way to manufacture. Now, there are other things going on here, too. This is another way of looking at it. Uh, We've got this uh, white OLED over here and the color filters in the front. This would be the LG method. And then the uh, Samsung method is to use the individual R, G, and B. This, this has a, a disadvantage. This uh, color by white has a disadvantage. And one is, is that you throw away a lot of the light, OK? Uh, you generally only get about one third of the light coming uh, through a set of color filters. You're throwing away the rest of it, you know, for the for the blue color filter, you're throwing away the red and the green. So uh, that means that this takes more power or emits less light or, or it's not as efficient as when you do it directly and you only turn on the, the pixels when you want them on. So uh, this has a disadvantage. Now it, it turns out that uh, you can um, actually uh, solve some of this problem by using uh, an extra white subpixel, okay? And this is, again, part of what's, what's called the RGBW. Uh, you might have seen me earlier in the, uh, 
the, the day I was, I had my, my little lens here and I was looking at this to see what these, these subpixels look like. And indeed, if you look at the LG display, you'll see this pattern. Uh, if you look at the Samsung display, you won't see the white, okay? And um, the advantage of this is if you have a white image, then you can just turn on this one, and since all the light gets through, you can get higher efficiency. So on the average, you'll, you'll be able to double the efficiency. Uh, now, there, there's other things that are going on here. One of the things I noticed, and you should look at it, when you see a full white screen on this one versus this one, what I noticed was that uh, this one had an angular dependence on the color. In other words, I, when I was sitting over here in this chair, I saw rainbows on this one. Okay, and the reason is that uh, the, the structure of the thin film of the OLED is, uh, let's see if I've got a good one. Well, th this whole layer can act sort of like a Fabry Pro interferometer, okay, so that at different angles you'll get rainbow effects. Now, the good thing about the, uh, the color by white, okay, by using this method is that the colors are determined by the color filters, okay? And so even though that Fabry Pro interference is still something that might happen in an OLED material, uh, it doesn't show up with the RGB. So even though these take more power or don't emit as much light, uh, they do have some advantages. So, and of course, the fact that this one costs quite a bit less than that one, uh, uh, I, I think that that particular technology, there's been reports in the press that Samsung isn't manufacturing it now. Now, I don't, I don't know how you came by this one, but I've, I've seen those, those reports. So uh, it could be the yield is very low and they don't want to sell very many of them, so they, they really haven't, uh, you know, continued to go. So let's see. Let's, let's move on. We've talked enough about OLEDs. Uh, the other things that's important to look at is the two different kinds of backlight technologies. Uh, I believe you said two of these, uh, what these two over here are edge-lit displays. And uh, what I can usually see in an edge-lit display, and I haven't quite seen it in this, this one, but if you, have a black, a, if you have a black image with something white where they have to turn the display on, you'll actually see that edge. Sometimes they put them on the top, sometimes they put them on the side, and uh, uh, it, it's pretty clear to see it when, once you know what to look for. Uh, Whereas the, the other way of doing it is to have a, uh, a full array backlit. Uh, and um, what you do is in the back of the display, you put the LEDs distributed over the whole screen. And this one has it, and I believe this one has it. Uh, is this, this is edge lit or is this? No, is that's full array also. Okay, so we have three full arrays. Uh, uh, you didn't see too many of these because they cost more. You have to have a lot of LEDs. And I would bet these LEDs are white LEDs. Is that right? Yeah. This, this image shows RGB. Uh, and uh, actually, this was done by a, uh, an LED manufacturer, so they want to sell more LEDs. So they're going to put, <laughs> put a few more LEDs in there. Uh, this has a great advantage in that it actually takes less power. Even though it costs more, it takes less power. Because what you can do is if you get an image like this, okay, you can turn only a few LEDs on in the center, right where you need that luminance. And down here, you don't have very many LEDs on at all. Or you can turn them down way, way down. And so uh, you can also get much better contrast with this technology. So I would expect that the contrast is going to be better in these than it is in those. And uh, uh, so anyhow, I didn't want to take up too much time. Uh, that's the story. This is this. Uh, and so thank you, Robert. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> okay. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Dr.